Greetings and welcome to CRT Gaming Podcast, episode number 22, Max Payne 2. This is Jones, and with me this evening are my good friends Gohan and Das Pick, and I'm Mr. Gohan. Did you get your freak on in an alley with a lady named Mona? I am out of my mind on painkillers, and I'm ready to bring the pain uh, for this week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of pain pills, Daz, did you pop a few pills and go on the hunt for the inner circle? Yeah, a few bottles worth uh, at minimum. <laughs> <laughs> When's Max going to get an intervention? That's what I want. <laughs> uh, that, that doesn't ever happen, actually. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> they call that's like they call that a functioning addict. <laughs> <laughs> High functioning. Uh, oh, excellent. So this is um, well, like the first uh, game of this genre that uh, Daz has chosen for us, which is the third-person shooter. Is that correct? Is that what we're playing? Yeah, 3D third-person shooters. Okay, so it's 3D third-person shooters, not just yeah. third-person shooters. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you selected Max Payne 2. So uh, what were your uh, thoughts on this game going into it? When we were doing this tonight, I was only going to, initially, I was only going to talk about Max Payne 2, but as we discussed further into finding out you guys hadn't really played Max Payne 2, that you hadn't even played Max Payne 3, and it kind of, I died a little bit on the inside when I heard that. So we're actually going to talk about all of them tonight, but very briefly. Um, Is this the unofficial Max Payne special? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, (laughs) Pretty much. But just on Max Payne 2, <laughs> when it came out, uh, I absolutely lost my freaking mind over it. One, because I loved the first game so much. One of the things I loved about 2 not only was, you know, the, the story, the whole neo-noir thriller again, which is what one of the things that made the original so great and the, the bullet time, obviously. But it was uh, that on the PC, you started getting some sweet mods for it, too, which was awesome. And after I finished the game, I started installing these things like crazy and you, they had like cinematic mods to make everything look just a little bit more stylish and cleaned up and added new weapons and uh, submachine guns and assault rifles and mini guns and all kinds of craziness. Things would slow down more the longer you hit them and then you could ju- <laughs> you could juggle them in the air with blood flying all over the room. It was absolute madness. So yeah, those were my initial thoughts about this game. Uh, I absolutely <laughs> loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that from my uh, I've known in Daz over the years, that description is that's what Daz plays. That's what uh, <laughs> that's his meat potatoes there. Um, <laughs> Absolutely chaos with gunplay. Yes. All right. So you heard you heard my thoughts. What were you guys' thoughts? Because you said you really hadn't played this much, Jones. I, I didn't play this much because, uh, well, I I know we. St- have a lot of similar opinions on games, but games like this um, gravitate you like a black hole. I, I, I've known you over the years, and this is this is your bread and butter. This is what you could play. Probably, you could probably play this like if you woke up in the morning until you literally passed out. Um, uh, to me, You're absolutely right. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I have done uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's okay it, it's just like an, like it's um it's like repetitive like like back when this came out um some of the things i i didn't care for really are things that, that you did enjoy like the just like the cutscenes, like you know they were like done in a comic book story mode which is is kind of cool but kind of like when this was originally coming out like this is the dawn of, you know, like th- these are like multi gigabyte games now, you know, like this is when uh, you have, uh, you know, pre-rendered, you know, full motion video or in game, like full cut scenes. And, you know, it just, to me, it was, it didn't hold my interest uh, just reading the story through a narrated comic, if, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It, it does have a lot of things that I did like in it. Um, and then it just had things that I didn't, I didn't care for 
there was one level not too far into the game when you go back to your apartment and you had to do some platforming. Yes. Outside and the windows and that's that's total jank. That that's total jank. because uh, one of the parts I got stuck at was I would go out out into a ledge and because of your vantage point and it being like a like third person, I did not realize there was a window on the ledge behind me I could climb through. Just because the whole time you can't see it. And mm -hmm. that that made me mad because I was stuck there for about forty minutes. I was running around. I was doing you know, trying to dive off the platform and land on some tires maybe because you know, <laughs> there's no other there's nothing else I could possibly do. I know exactly where you're talking about. There's some trial and error. But it, it did have things that I, I did enjoy uh, of games from this time. Like, for example, like my character can hold like it, an ungodly amount of weapons at once, as opposed to having to have two or three weapons or weapons I have to choose from to keep. I just, now nah, I got it all on me at all times. So I, In his back I like pocket. That. <laughs> Max has got deep pockets, bro. He's got a deep pocket. <laughs> It looked good. I think it held up pretty well. I mean, you know, you can tell it's dated, but it's, you know, on the PC, it's still, you know, it looks pretty decent. Third person, I haven't, was never great at uh, third person controls on the keyboard. Like first person, uh, I'll do it all day. But like, I don't know, it doesn't translate to me going third person. I'd rather play a third person game with a controller. But that's my own limitation. But it did have a lot of, like I said, cool things. The bullet time was cool. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, like John Woo, The Matrix, and Frank Miller had a baby. It's kind of <laughs> what this game kind of is. I agree. That is absolutely <laughs> the uh, the recipe. <laughs> yeah, I think the um, something to kind of consider, especially with Max Payne 2, was, um, you know, it came out in 2003, and... As you're saying, Jones, and I totally agree with you, it's like, really, it was like a year after this is when Call of Duty 4 came out, where it started introducing the big kind of set piece encounters. And um, as you're saying, it's like, you know, we were just on the precipice of having those kind of pre-rendered cutscenes, not just be there, you know, present in the game, but at times interactive in, in real time. And uh, Max Payne two came out just before call of duty kind of you know popularized that so yeah i mean it definitely you know it's a shooter it's it's pretty you know pretty samey in some instances uh i actually strangely enough i i love playing uh all my third person games with um a controller but max Payne is actually the one exception where just because the bullet time aiming is so accurate like i find that yeah. n not only not only uh oh yeah the mouse is no problem it's just the you know moving my feet the, the, the moving yeah <laughs> just you no know, that totally makes sense and i it was, you know i personally like I played the living shit out of the first Max Payne game. And when the second one came out, it just kind of got uh, lost in the mix, you know, a little bit for me. But some of the stuff that Jones was talking about with like, you know, like goofy platforming shit, there, that was like kind of present in the first game. There's like this sequence in the first game where you're like following this like blood trail through this the kind nightmares. of dream sequence. And it's like, man, it's kind of, it's like fucking Dark Souls punishing. It's like you have to yep. bullet time over and roll and it's like, fuck this. you know, like this is not, I want to get back to killing, you know, bad guys is this kind of edgy John McClane character um, as opposed to, you know, trying to play some jumping puzzle, you know, or, or, or the like. Something about the game and just the fact that, like, Max can carry everything in the kitchen sink alongside him, you know, throughout the game definitely uh, kind of harkens back to, you know, when inventory systems were like that. It was nice to not have to play, like, the gun swap game or some you know, elaborate inventory system. It's like, nope, you see a gun, you get a gun, you know, and got it, got it. <laughs> you got it for the rest of the game. <laughs> I agree with everything you guys said. There's there's things that uh, games do that they don't need to like Max Payne is a third person shooter. It doesn't need to include platforming. Uh, Destiny did the same thing where you know, suddenly like in the raids, you have these huge platforming sections and it's like, dude, what? 
<laughs> Why? Yeah. This, this is a first person shooter, man. No, like when there's games that like jam that in, like it's yeah. like you're saying, it's like try like the dinosaur I'm, hunter. That's another good example where it's just like I was doing this thing and now you're making me do this less fun, less polished yes. thing. And yes. it's okay to have those like little interludes, um, but where you're having to do like an entire level of it, it's you know, I think I think that's to, to be fair to Max Payne too, they they break it up a little bit more. Like the the dream sequence stuff in the first game was a little long in the tooth. You know, it was for sure. Talk about like old like you know just things of this time was Jesus Christ their checkpoint system. <laughs> like yes. holy shit! Like I remember just like playing through one of the levels. It's like towards the beginning where you're like in that church like slash nightclub thing or whatever and I like died at the very end of it I was like oh checkpoint and then it's like no you're actually starting at the beginning yeah, of the level. <laughs> yeah that's one of the, the benefits of the PC is why I was recommending on PC is because uh, the F5 and F9 keys are your friends and you use them a lot because there's like like you said in that level in particular like you'll get to the last fight and the last fight has like a bullshit section where you have a wave of guys you're trying to kill but you can't see you can't get to the guys up top but they pop in they'll get to you but you can only shoot at them when they're visible and they'll be hanging around dancing around up top and you can't shoot them until then and so you have yeah. to wait for them to be visible and then the next section starts and they you, you know you can totally screw it up because you're getting a hit there's a lot of blind fire happening it's kind of annoying but all that aside I still love the shit out of the game. I love the, you know, the way that Bullet Time is incorporated into it. They, they improved it in the second game where it kind of built up over time. Where in the first game, you just kind of, every time you killed somebody, you got some back. They, they, they made better use of it. They also, you know, made it more stylish. Uh, made it look like a Chow Young Fat doing some some hot action from the killer in it with his his spins on reloads the, the, and, behind the back you know yeah behind <laughs> the back. i was curious how that worked if you just do like a uh you know like a hollywood style spin does that just reload your weapon without actually reloading it because you know he would well know, nobody can around. shoot you during that time because you know you're, you're looking too cool and everybody pauses and go holy shit what's this guy doing oh i know that's amazing <laughs> You know, like if you're standing still, you, you reload. Like you can, but you know, yes. you drop your clips out your gun. But you know, in the middle of the battle, you just kind of spin around and you're you're reloaded. Because it's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Before the first game even came out, you know, we had the that 3D Mark demo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, that kind of got people ready for Max Payne, which had uh, a simulated lobby shootout from the Matrix, incorporating the same graphics engine as Max Payne and people were like holy crap this looks amazing what the hell is this and then you know Max Payne came Max Payne came out shortly thereafter but that 3D Mark demo was kind of the thing that just kind of got everybody's attention it was like this look, this is badass yeah um, it was a show pony for like particle effects you oh know, yeah like, just because like you're saying it's the matrix lobby scene so you're seeing all the uh columns getting chowdered <laughs> and blown away and all that stuff and it's just like holy shit like, yeah that was awesome and i remember back then, you know, I, it was back then it was very impressive so the matrix is what popularized bullet time but i think the first time it was actually used in a mainstream movie was in blade Cause that came out the year before the Matrix, and you remember when um, Deacon Frost throws the little little kid into the middle of the street, and then Blade fires at him, and it shows him kind of duck the bullets in bullet time, and that was like, oh, that, that's freaking cool as shit. Why hasn't anybody ever done that? And then the next year, the Matrix came out with this whole, you know, badass new take on it with the insane camera rigs and setups and all that that just made it so freaking wicked anyway i always thought that was kind of neat max Payne one definitely set the groundwork for games actually using bullet time because enter the matrix sure as hell didn't because that was trash do you remember that turd burglar of a game oh, oh that one was uh that was a little a little rough that that was one of those things where there's like the matrix is officially a transmedia multimedia you know, <laughs> IP, and then it's like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, it's it a, like a retarded decision. I mean, like if you're gonna make a Matrix game, who do you want to play as? I know Kung Fu. 
you know, not but, you some know, character you've ghost, never seen. And I forget the girl's name in it. I remember the Niobe. Was, the Niobe. Yeah. 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 And it, it You're was, expecting and it, Morpheus and Neo and Trinity and like the characters that you like. <laughs> yes. You got characters that showed up for two seconds at the sequel as a background character that nobody cared about. So lame. So I was telling you guys earlier about Man on Fire, the movie with Denzel Washington directed by Tony Scott. And the reason I mentioned it was Max Payne 3 shares a lot of similarities with that film. The Both characters are very well trained, well experienced people who have had things not go well in their life and they're down on their luck. They're, you know, either... In Man on Fire, he's suicidal. He's also, so I you know, I drinking and all sorts of things. And Max is living every day in his life by pounding a bunch of booze, puking in his sink, popping a shitload of pills, and then passing out in bed. It's a dangerous combo. <laughs> and along with that, the visual style of both the game and the movie have a lot of similarities with the kind of out of focus and blurred effects that are implemented in Max Payne are also shared in Man on Fire. And it's just a other interesting thing Rockstar did to bring the game up and give it its own style aside from just a cool action shooter with bullet time. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. So Max Payne 2 came out in 2003. 3 didn't come out in 2012. In video so, game time, that's a huge gap. So Rockstar took that opportunity to completely redo the freaking game and bring it into current tech and their game engine. It was also nice that Rockstar used... The guy who's always done the voice for Max has been this actor named James McCaffrey. He did it in Max 1, 2, and 3. And as much as I love Sam Lake doing the face for Max in the first game. It was nice that they used James McCaffrey to do the motion capture uh, for all the all the stuff in Max Payne 3. Just a little appreciation of the dude who's been Max for so many years. And as anything Rockstar does, they took their time with it, man. And what they came out with was basically the best Die Hard sequel that never came out. It was freaking amazing. It's like a 12 hour action movie that just never stops while you're playing it like everything happens while you're watching a cutscene it's loading up the very next thing so there's no break there's no pause as soon as he's done talking you're in a shootout and you are deep in it and there's like 20 guys in the room and they're all shooting at you and if you use up your bullet time and you don't get enough headshots you're going to use it all up it, it, it's just super intense and incredibly adrenaline pumping. The, yeah, it, it, every, the videos every, look very fluid, right? You know, in Max Payne 1 and 2, if there was some, like, big encounter that was about to happen, you know, or some big sequence, there'd be, like, a load screen, or there'd be, like, a fade down and fade up. Like, yeah. with Max Payne 3, it just looks like one continuous, wherever they can, one continuous camera shot. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's kind of, you know, when we just were talking fluid, about... Just fluid, super fluid. Yeah, well, when you were, at, you were talking, and you said, oh, Max Payne 4 needs to get the God of War treatment. And I got thinking about it. I was like, holy shit, it already did. <laughs> that was Max Payne 3. They, they did exactly what they did with the new God of War game, which was just tear it apart and rebuild it into something current and better. And... I know there's people that are beholden to the originals and think that they're the best things ever. And I don't disagree. They're really good games. They're fun for what they are. I love them to death. But three is it's it's criminal if you don't play it because it it's so goddamn good at everything that it does bet between storytelling, the action, the control, everything. Are we dead? No such luck. Uh, the implementation of bullet time. Now, I will also say it's f***ing hard because with bringing it into current times, the bullets didn't slow down and <laughs> you're a bigger target and there's a lot of shit happening and you will take a lot of hits. 
Uh, but one of the things that they did really good is when you die, you can immediately jump right back in. There's no extensive load screens. Like you are right back to where you left off at the checkpoint. So it's not painful where you have to start completely over. It's regularly checkpointing you, which is forgiving. But there are some sequences that are incredibly hard. But man, the, the way it just throws you into such such heavy action. I, I just... Man, I really just want you guys to play it at some point. I mean, we don't have to talk about it then, but just on the side, you can tell me about it. But I absolutely love the whole series. But one of the things that I really loved was that I felt like every game got better as it went along. And as far as Max Payne 1 was really good, it introduced us to the bullet time in a video game. It was awesome. Two, tried to improve on it. Yes, there was some missteps with the platforming and one had it too but the story was bigger, and so it was overall a larger game. But three, they just went nuts with it, man. And everything about it is fantastic. The graphics, the music, the controls, incredible. Having played all those and numerous other third-person shooters, the one that I always come back to, and every time I turn it on, I can't put it down, is three max pain three like in in going through when i was talking to you guys i was like oh man i need to turn this on again and just see i couldn't put it down for like three hours after that <laughs> i ended up almost beating the damn game again i was like oh this is so good daz nip yeah i mean <laughs> it is it is but yeah i mean i know it's not the one we were supposed to talk about but i, I mean like i said i love people too i just I, I thought for sure you guys had played three, and I was, just died a little on the inside. Told me you had, but Thank God he is anything right. you guys want to add? Jones, so tell me what you really thought. About Max <laughs> I mean, dude, you you hit it on the head. I mean, this is oh, I, I this know. Is, I this know is you. my meat and potatoes, baby. This is this is uh Dad's madness. Pick on so uh, well, let's ask uh, Gohan here. Um, I, I I don't think I have to ask Daz what he thought about it. Uh, but I, I put a number on it, Daz. Here we go to Gohan. Like, what would you rank? You gotta, you, know, you gotta pick I'm, one I'm, here. We can't I talk know. about the Max Payne trilogy. Not the going to unofficial mods. Nope. The, uh, <laughs> since since we were talking about the gray movies, yeah, this no is no Max gray Payne market too. Max Payne. I mean, three uh, to me is a, the perfect third person shoot. So I know, but we're we're, we're no, gonna we, we're I know. Ranking I mean, Max Payne two. two. I, I would say two. I would give that a nine come, because come those the platforming light. sections were really really annoying. <laughs> Uh, totally agree with you on the platforming section. It's like, it's a buzzkill. You want to be diving and shooting, blasting and, you know, spraying people's bloody matter all over the walls, but you can't because you're trying to find the next platform to drop down. You know, it's like, man, I don't want to do this shit. I want to shoot people. That's what I'm doing. That's why I'm playing Max Payne. Max Payne doesn't get the guy a ladder, you know? It's <laughs> like climbing out windows and shit. So that, that was, you know. I, I agree with you on that. So, I mean, but everything else I did love, so I, I would still stick in the nines on this one. On two. Two gets Yeah, nine. on two. On two. I'm talking about two. Mr. Kahan, where do you put Mr. Max Payne at? The first game, huge, huge, huge fan of. The second game is, you know, if you if you like the first game, you're really, you know, you'll like the second game because it kind of expands on the story and, you know, all the features that we were kind of talking about earlier um in, in some ways you can kind of tell that they were trying to get something out because the first game was such a runaway success and no doubt about it like as when you brought up the idea that like our theme was third person 3d games you know they're shooters that's a that, that, it's shooters right you know that, that's a really that, that's a really limited band of good games because at the it's time so there was it's a very limited band it's very small uh there wasn't there's you know it's like there's there's a few games that were pretty noteworthy you know even in the early days but n none hold a candle you know to the max Payne series uh because it did a lot of really smart things with uh, camera control 
And I'm not just talking about all the fancy, flourishy bullet time, bullet time stuff. Like, it did a pretty elaborate, like, camera rig that followed Max around when, mm -hmm. you know, you were in a, in a normal size room versus a tight space and trying to make that, um, trying to always make the player always, you know, in focus and looking at what they should be looking at. You know, that, that was kind of a big feat back then. Uh, and, you know, Max Payne 2 definitely was, you know, another kind of... You know, good addition to what is a solid, solid base of a of a game. Something about like I, you know, I love the you know the the idea of a noir story, but I actually like the more like cheesy John McClane kind of stuff in the first game, uh, and going to kind of Sin City in the second game. I was like, oh, I kind of want a little bit more of the kind of action movie, you know, kind of vibe, you know, back to it, where it didn't quite take itself so. You know seriously but anyways this, this is all to say that uh really good game um the first game for me was you know in the in the low nines but max pain 2 excellent but i'd probably score it around like an 8.5 or you know 8 8.5 something like that a lot of words to get a number out of you <laughs> <laughs> good words damn it good words <laughs> all right, truth so i guess the uh, truth i said i'll leave it down to me and I would spray your this, hate. It's not hate. <laughs> it's just not my cup of tea. Um, I, I give it like a six. So is and a this? Half. Are you saying this is your F zero? Let's go bail out your boss before he talks us all. No, because I'm saying <laughs> no, because I, I this. I don't think you liked. It's not that I didn't like this game. I just don't like it as much as you. Do. It, it's just uh. So that's exactly uh, like, your F Zero then. Yeah, third person games really, <laughs> to me, don't really get good till about I don't know, like the like the 360 era. Like uh, just just things about them I, I never really cared for. I can't really put a finger on it. I don't think they controlled that well till about Gears of War came out, and then you have like everything after that, like the Tomb Raiders. Like they, they they're excellent. Um, the new Tomb Raiders. Yeah, the new Tomb Raiders, like Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn. I mean, just things uh, just got better. Like, like when this came out, I was more of a first-person shooter kind of guy. Um, totally and, agree. And I kind of like, I did like the bullet time, but to me, it was kind of like a. I, I wanted the Matrix. Like, I, I would much rather have had the Matrix. So, like when the first Max Payne came out. I didn't even really play the game other than do the mods that you spoke of to, you know, create the lobby scene. Um, mm -hmm. But that, that's just me, you know. Uh, I'm quirky. Uh, but I get a, a six and a half. It's not bad. It's just not my cup of tea. All right. So is it, well, this is your uh, Max Payne uh, super special. Is there anything you'd like to add to it before we find out what Gohan wants to pick for the next week? No, I just uh, at some point just uh, right, now listen to me. give three a, give you the word. a, ta a taste. Give it a three looked better, like to me. Like what, give, what give you showed me of three, it, it, that looked just actually good. I, th I think I think you'll dig three. I'll just say that. Uh, it's a different animal. It is. It's considerably harder, but it's it's a very narrow focused game. What it's doing, and it's it's really good between the story, the action, the gameplay mechanics, everything about it. It's just a, a, they basically they took everything you loved about the originals and just ramped it all up so much better. They didn't do the comic book scenes they did. Like I said, it, it's very stylized after Man on Fire. It's it, I mean it has basically they looked at Tony Scott's movie and said, "That's a good idea." Let's mimic that look, and that's how all the cutscenes play out in the exact same style as Man on Fire. Uh, so if you're familiar with that movie, you'll very much recognize it when you turn on Max Payne 3. Um, Excellent. Yeah. This, this, well, I mean, like I said, I, I sent you a picture earlier this week of the brand new copy I had since it came out, and <laughs> I've never yeah. opened it. So uh, I, I would play it on PC. Not on yeah, Xbox. yeah, I definitely would too. But you know. It's, but it's, I, I'm it's now intrigued too, as opposed to it just kind of sitting on my shelf wrapped in plastic, never to be looked at again. <laughs> I 
<laughs> so no, I mean, you know, I got everything I wanted to say out about this. It's a incredible game. And, and if you haven't played it, you should play it. All of them. Uh, they're all good. Three is incredible. Some people don't agree. I don't give a f I think three is the best one that ever came out and is one of the best third person shooters ever made. Done. Huh. <laughs> all right, so as we close this chapter on Max Payne and his, you know, pill popping, you know, gun shooting good times, um, Gohan was going to choose a, what is it, 3D third person shooter. That, is that the genre? That's it. All Nailed right. it. On the head. So, uh, Gohan, well, what game did you possibly find out of this, uh, this mouse trap that we're in? To choose out? <laughs> Jones, I'm getting us out of here. Uh, I'm about to chew my leg uh, off. <laughs> don't, hold on, hold on. Um, you know, Jones, when you kind of laid out the format, you know, you said that these were kind of like specials and we can kind of. Know, not just do something that's 100%, you know, kind of retro, right? Um, but trying to keep in the spirit of the third person 3D. Oh my shooter. God, you guys are terrible. <laughs> in, in Jesus keeping, Christ. In, in keeping with that theme, though, um, I wanted to kind of do something uh, a little bit different. So uh, recently uh, it was put on a PlayStation 4. It was put on Nintendo Switch and a Steam. Uh, I haven't played it myself. We're definitely going into this one blind. I hope it's good. Uh, but uh, the Panzer Dragoon uh, Rebirth game. It's apparently like a you know end-to-end -end, uh, remaster of the first uh, Panzer Dragoon game uh, from the Sega Saturn. So that's what we're going to try our hand at next. Okay, awesome. That's sexy. So, a little revisit. Uh, the, I don't even know what crazy planet that stuff happens on, but the uh, magical world of Panzer <laughs> Dragoon and their poppycock talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which you I love. I, I love. I love the old games. Like I, dude, the old I, games were on point. They, they, for me, like I loved. You know the the first. You know pretty Sega stuff on the the Saturn. Uh, but Dragon was just like the reason for me to own the the Sega system uh, early days. Yeah, it, it should that should be good. Good to revisit that game. It was definitely. Uh, one of a kind. There's nothing else quite like it that I'm aware of, at least. You know, stay tuned to next week as we uh, board our dragon and we check out a uh, Panzer Dragoon. Till then, this is uh, Jones with Daz Pick and Gohan, and we are signing out. Until next time. <laughs> Get him,